The stereochemical properties of the carbocation intermediate involved in hydrohalogenation are key to understanding the stereochemistry of this reaction, and in particular, it's important to keep in mind that the nucleophile, the halide anion, can approach from above or below the plane of the carbocation, and free rotation about this bond is possible so that the hydrogen and any substituents that may be attached to this carbon as well can rotate readily. This means that the most favorable stereoisomer will tend to be the one that minimizes steric hindrance or steric interactions in the product. Let's look at a somewhat simpler situation first. Here's a reaction that establishes one stereocenter in the product. That stereocenter is the carbon that bears the halogen atom in the product. These reaction conditions give rise to a racemic mixture. And this is because the key carbocation intermediate, whose structure looks like this, is achiral. When the X minus anion approaches this carbocation to complete the mechanism, it can do so in one of two ways, approaching from above the carbocation like so, or approaching below the carbocation like this. These two trajectories are enantiomeric. Perhaps the easiest way to see this is that they would give rise to enantiomers. The pathway shown in blue involving bottom face approach of X minus would give rise to this product, while the pathway in red, which involves top face approach, would give rise to this product. These two molecules are enantiomers, and for this reason, we should expect a 50-50 mixture of the two approaches and the two products, and this is a racemic mixture. To indicate this, we can either draw both enantiomeric products using a plus sign to indicate that both form, or we can use a wavy bond linked to the stereocenter to show an equal mixture of up and down CX bonds, for example, in the products of this reaction. What about a more complicated situation in which two stereocenters are set? Hydrohalogenation forms two new sigma bonds, and so in a general situation, we might form two new stereocenters. Now the issue is really syn versus anti. Enantiomers are still possible, but we should still expect a racemic mixture of any two enantiomers, since none of the reactants are chiral here. The two diastereomeric possibilities of interest involve a difference in configuration at one of the two stereocenters. If H and X add in a syn fashion, we arrive at this product. If H and X add in an anti fashion, then one of the stereocenters will still match, but the other will have a different configuration, indicating that a diastereomeric relationship exists between these two molecules. Because these are diastereomers, we should expect an unequal mixture of the two to form. And the interesting distinction with the top case is that now the key carbocation intermediate is chiral rather than achiral, since protonation of the double bond created one of the stereocenters. Ultimately, the favored stereoisomer here depends on subtle steric factors. For example, is it more favorable to place D in a gauche relationship to X versus a gauche relationship to the phenyl group? Evaluating these kinds of steric interactions is beyond the scope of 2311, but I do want to make you aware that this reaction and other types of electrophilic additions can form diastereomers. Hydrohalogenation and hydration are unique in that they involve discrete carbocation intermediates formed from protonation of a double bond. So there's no intrinsic mechanistic preference for the syn or anti products, meaning it all comes down to sterics. The most important takeaway of this video is actually the top case. Whenever a hydrohalogenation establishes one stereocenter, it will do so to give rise to a racemic mixture.